right, let's talk a little bit more about GC C10, uh, the business of properties and things proven about triangles. And uh, in the previous video, we established that the triangles angle sum, interior angle sum equals 180 degrees. Here we're going to add two more uh, new items, one about an isosceles triangle. I want to just talk briefly about these proofs. I'm not going to do them specifically because uh, we want students to kind of experience them and learn them. But one of the properties is to prove that the base angles of an isosceles are equal. That we'd want to prove that angle B and angle C are equal if this is an isosceles. And there are kind of two camps here uh, of how to approach this. You could approach it in what I would just call kind of a traditional manner using triangle congruence. And what that would mean is that you and I would work to establish that this triangle over here uh, is indeed congruent to this triangle over here. And without writing all of the specifics, let me just kind of walk you through a few things. Um, because it's an isosceles, you know you have two sides that are equal. Uh, you would know that this here is a common side, or what we call the reflexive property, that AD would be congruent to AD. And then you would know um, that the perpendicular bisector, which has to go through A, the perpendicular bisector BC has to go through A, because all points in the perpendicular bisector are equidistant, and those are equidistant to B and C. So this would be a right angle. Uh, amassing those three items, you have a right angle, you have a hypotenuse, and a leg. And so I think we could proceed with an HL approach to proving these things to be congruent. Another way, and, and once you've established they're congruent, by the way, is then you would say the base angles are equal because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, which is often known as CPCTC. That's a fairly cryptic thing, but used all throughout uh, geometry. The second approach might be more of a transformational approach. I think you can see that um, if I took a piece of paper, or if I had this on paper, one could reflect on the other. And so the second approach might be a mapping approach. And the approach, uh, again, in kind of casual terms, might talk about A mapping to A, if this is our line of reflection. D would map to D, of course, both on the line of reflection. And B has to map to C because, by definition, a, a line of reflection is the perpendicular bisector of, B, of that segment BC. And so, look, angle ABD would map onto angle ACD, thus making them congruent because a reflection is isomorphic. Uh, and holds on to those properties of preserving angles and things like that. Is isometric, isometric. So um, this establishes that uh, in an isosceles triangle, base angles are congruent. This is sometimes called ITT, the isosceles triangle theorem, and it says if you have an isosceles triangle, you get base angles that are equal, and it works in converse. If you have base angles that are equal, you have an isosceles triangle, and so on. The other uh, item that we need to use here or understand is called the exterior angle theorem. And again, I'll work quickly on this. The exterior angle theorem, first of all, an exterior angle is an extension of one of the sides. It's the angle formed between the extension and its adjacent side there. And, um, and it just says the measure of angle 1, the exterior angle, is equal to the measure of angle uh, 3 and 4. These two guys are equal to this. Now you say, whoa, where did that come from, kind of out of nowhere? 
This isn't that bad of logic, and again, I'm not going to write all the physical steps. Uh, I'm going to talk them through, and I think you can understand them. But one argument, uh, one statement will be that 1 and 2 together make 180 degrees. It will also be true that 2, 3, and 4 together all equal 180 degrees. One group equals 180, the other group equals 180. Together they equal each other. And you will find that the common piece in that substitution process is that there will be a 2 and a 3, 2, 3, 4 in one group, equaling a 1 and a 2 in the other group. And if you subtract off angle 2 from both sides of that relationship, you're left with 1 equals 3 and 4. Now, just as I explained in the other case, there is also um, a way to do this transformationally. And again, I'm not in the business of giving all of the reveal away, but here's the concept. By performing a translation of this right here, you would place that triangle right in that angle. Now remember, we want to prove that 3 and 4 equal that full angle 1. Well, by that translation, we've just dropped 4 into that angle. And you have a couple of options how to get 3 in there. The translation creates the parallel lines, and so you could do alternate interior angles to drop it in there. To see that, that would be 3 and 4 equaling 1. You could uh, talk about a rotation. A rotation also would drop that right into place. There's a couple of options, but ultimately, there, this is the truth we find, is that the measure of 1 and the measure equals the measure of 3 and 4. We'll look at some specific applications of it now, just solving problems. Uh, here in just a second. So while the intro was fairly abstract about where we prove these or establish these relationships, the worksheet itself in this case is quite straightforward where it's just asking you to use those properties. So one of the things that you and I established was that the, uh, the, the angles, the interior angles in a triangle all add up to 180 degrees. And so using that idea, we can do um, some nice math here. So in the first case, we just have two angles. And uh, we would just take those two angles of 96 and of 44 and subtract them to obtain 40 degrees. So I just took 180. I took away the 96, took away the 44. And what's left has to be our value of C, which would be 40. Here, similarly, uh, if we want to know uh, this angle, we would take 180, subtract the 90, subtract the 32, and we get, of course, a 58 in that spot, 58. Now, things start to get more interesting as you get uh, common symbols like these two here. This, of course, refers to two things that are the same. So what you'd do here is you'd take your 180, subtract your 50 to see what's left, which is 130, and half of 130 would just be 65. So we're applying what was a little tricky to prove, but once we've proven that the angles, interior angles in the triangle equal 180, then we can just simply work that out. The second thing you and I uh, established through proof was that the base angles of an isosceles triangle have to be equal. And so we're going to use that here. So uh, I notice that they're asking for angle C down here in this corner. So I take 180 and subtract 98. And that leaves me with 82. And half of 82 is 41. Because 41 and 41 make 82. Added to 98 makes 180. Here, this is kind of the reverse process, that the base angles have to be equal in this isosceles. This is 130. That would leave this vertex angle at 50. They start to get more interesting as they combo them, but this is the same idea. Uh, they would like us to find angle D way out here. Well, what we could do is take 180 and subtract 36, which is 144. And if we divided that by 2, we would obtain the two base angles. Now, if this is 72, this is 108. 
And now I have a vertex angle of a new isosceles, and I can begin to work that this, uh, if this adds to 180, that's 72. And so they have to be 36 each. Finally, the other uh, and final guy that we uh, established was called the exterior angle theorem. And we learned that the exterior angle, which in this case is BCD, the one they're requesting, is the sum of the two remotes. So it's as easy as 147 in this case. In this case, um, you if you're finding angle A, that's not bad because these two angles have to equal this. So this is 118 because 118 and, uh, and 42 make 160. And then finally, if they want to know this angle, we know that these are a linear pair. So that has to be uh, 20 there. So this particular worksheet is just you working out um, the mechanics of the, the theory in application.